Hello, I am Bill Selick. Welcome to EDC 514 Week 6. We're going to talk about sound. Let's jump into it. When you see the word audience, usually what you think about is people that kind of sit and watch something. We've talked about lighting and how video really just is lighting. Video is light. If you don't have light, you don't have video. But if you actually look at the etymology of the word audience, it's just the word odd. Does that sound like anything? Ah, so maybe audio. When you think about audio, it's actually listening. Now, audio is actually what's going to carry the performance in a video. Audio is really what's going to tell the story. If you have all these disjointed clips for video, but if your audio is nice and smooth, it's going to feel like it's a cohesive piece of video. If the audio is choppy, if you hear a lot of background noise and you can hear like a lawnmower outside of your classroom every time you cut, it's going to sound really disjointed. That's one of the reasons that having sound going in the background, some sort of music, soundtrack, something like that, is going to make a difference and make it feel like it's just, again, that cohesive piece of video that you might not have without it. On our 514 page, there are all sorts of links for you for different audio clips. Some of them will link you to actually Amazon where you can buy podcasting music. It'll sound like the beginning of a newscast, the beginning of like a sports show, something like that. The great thing about licensed music is that you're actually allowed to use it. So in graduate coursework and starting now for the rest of your career, when you use audio, when you use video, when you use anything that is not yours, please do not steal it. Make sure it's yours. If you buy it, that does not make it yours. When you buy it, that means I can consume this. I can use it. I can put it on my own device. But that's about all that you're actually allowed to do with it. If you're using it in your classroom, in real time, you can get away with a lot more. But if you're making a nice polished piece of video, you want to make sure that you actually have permission. If you make it yourself, you have permission to use it. If you buy it from iTunes, you do not have permission to use it. If you buy a song, you have permission to play that song, and that's it. But these links I gave you that link to podcasting music, you are actually allowed to use for whatever you want, for podcasts, for any sort of video. Give them permission at the end or the very, very, very bottom somewhere, or in the description on your YouTube page. Music by yada yada. If you don't have that licensed music, please do not use it. Please don't say, oh, this song would fit perfect. I want to use uh, Michael Jackson's Thriller because that's a, the perfect mood. No, it doesn't work like that. I want to use something from Pirates of the Caribbean because that would be really cool. doesn't work like that. There's a handful of sites where you can create, uh, or not create, where you can find music that you're allowed to use. Moby, M-O-B-Y, that singer guy that's kind of off on his own indie emo kind of guy. Moby has a whole bunch of music. You can Google just, you know, Moby's licensed music. He has some soundtrack that he's, um, he's put out that you can use for a soundtrack. So please do not just use whatever music you love just because you own it or because you can do it. Make sure you're using music that you're allowed to use. If you have GarageBand, you can actually create your own music, create your own loops. I'm going to show you that in a little bit. When you're recording, you're probably going to be using a microphone. Now, you might have the built-in microphone if you're using your computer, or if you're using a camera, you might use just the built-in. I think if you're taking a course like this, at the very least, you should know about different pickup patterns, and at the very least, two different types of microphones. The two big types of microphones, dynamic or condenser, dynamic microphones are the ones that look like those ice cream cones that you know have that little ball right there. It's actually a spit guard or a pop guard. Those ones are incredibly durable. You can actually use those to drive nails into a 2 by 4 it's, it's amazing. They take a beating, um, and they're good pretty much forever. The way dynamic microphones work is there's actually a magnet in the middle and then another magnet surrounding it. When you talk into it or when it picks up any sort of sound pressure, that diaphragm on the top is connected to one piece of... Um, of magnet, that's what they're called. So one magnet actually pushes against the other, then that change in magnetism is what's translated through the cable. That's transferred to electronic information, then that passes into a sound system. 
sound system takes that, then there's some sort of power amp that powers that, amplifies it way, way up, and instead of being electric, that's converted back into something with a speaker that vibrates it again, and that's how we get sound again. So with dynamic, it starts off as sound, change in magnet, electric, amplified, and then again, sound again. Condenser are far more fragile. This is an example of a condenser microphone I'm using right now. This is the Blue Yeti microphone. I'm going to play a demo of all three of those for you a little bit later. Condenser microphones are much more fragile because they have two thin pieces of metal. One has an electrical charge. If you've ever heard of phantom power, that's what that is. One has an electrical charge, one does not, and one of them's connected to the diaphragm, the thing you speak into. So when you speak, or when there's any sort of sound pressure, it's going to barely push on that, and because it's so sensitive, one's charged, one isn't, it's that change in electrical impulse, basically, that gets transferred into the cable, stays electric, then goes into the sound system, gets amplified through the power amp, and then the speaker has that diaphragm again that vibrates, and that's how we get sound on the other end. Condenser microphones, as you can hear if I get much closer to this microphone, pick up all those nuances. You can't even hear my fingers. Dynamics are much more rugged. You're going to see them live because they can withstand all sorts of damage and torture like in a cafeteria. Dynamics is going to kind of smooth it out more, but condenser is going to get all those details. Second part, the pickup patterns. I'm going to just point to this and show you so it might sound a little bit funny for you on this end. So if I turn it sideways, one pickup pattern is cardioid, shaped like a heart. So it's going to pick up what's immediately in front of it, but not what's behind it. So if you look at it this way, it's going to pick up all of this and not much of this. I'm actually on the side, so you're not going to hear it as well as if I turn it and I'm directly in front of it. That's a cardioid pattern. This microphone, the Blue Yeti, actually has several patterns. And if you just click around, you can choose different ones. Another one just has a circle. It doesn't look like a heart. It's omni. So it doesn't matter where you're located around this microphone. It's going to pick it up evenly, which would be great for a meeting, a discussion with a big group if you wanted to screencast that. It would be terrible in a concert because the audience would be as loud as the singer, and audiences are way louder. There's one more that actually is on this microphone that I want to talk about is bi-directional. It looks like a figure eight, a circle in a circle. The front of it and the back of it are equally picked up, but the sides are not picked up. So this would be great for an interview. You could set it between them, and there could even be a lot of noise on either side, but it'll only pick up the very front and the very back. This microphone, the Blue Yeti microphone, is incredibly rare because usually you have to pay a lot of money to get all those different pickup patterns. This was only $100. It connects with USB, so it goes straight to your computer, which is, again, perfect for screencasting, for podcasting. I actually use it when I record professional video, when I want it to really spend a lot of time, but then I have to record it on a separate video camera, record the audio, and then sync it later. So Movie Maker anything on the iPad and uh, iMovie just don't do a great job of syncing sound. You want to bump up and, and pay more money. Something that Adobe would make like Premiere or Apple's Final Cut is what you would want if you want to record the audio separately and later sync it. So it's kind of annoying. It's a few extra steps. But if you want that really great audio, that would be the next step you would do. So that's really all you need to know about microphones. Um, realistically, you're probably going to either use your built-in microphone from the camera or your computer based on what you're going to do. Uh, but it's important to know that that's there so that if you ever do want to upgrade or if someone asks you, you'll be able to answer intelligently and actually know what you're talking about with microphones and different types of microphones. When you're actually recording, before you hit that record button, you need to think about a couple things and you need to listen for a couple of things. First of all, listen to what's around you. Right now, if I stop talking, you're probably going to hear the air conditioner way over here. Now, it's hot, I'm wearing a long sleeve shirt, so I decided beforehand, I made a conscious decision, too bad you're going to hear a little bit of background noise because it takes 20 minutes for the air to turn back on if I turn it off. If I had time, I could actually record this at the end of the day, turn it off, and just deal with it, and there'd be no background noise. If you're recording outside, 
pay attention if there's a playground around, a street nearby, if you're near an exterior air conditioner, that's going to completely ruin your sound. If you're right in front of the camera, you're right in front of the microphone. If I'm right in front of the microphone, it's very loud. If I'm very far away, it's going to be quiet. If I'm filming lots of wide shots, pay attention to that. You don't want wide shots if you're going to use your built-in microphone because you're not going to really hear anything. If you're not sure, record a little test, get, you know, 15 feet away, hit record, run over and talk, and then listen to it. If you can't hear yourself, don't use that type of shot if you're going to use a built-in camera and we need to hear you. If you're doing a lesson where you're going to be writing on a board behind you or looking away at people, again, pay attention to where that microphone is. Let me just demonstrate what that might look like if I was going to write something on the board. So, boys and girls, if I'm writing something and I do this over on the board and then turn around, suddenly you can hear me. But if I turn back again, you can't really hear what I'm saying. So this is a great mic. You might have been able to hear a bit of that, but it makes a significant difference if you turn away from the camera. It's also great that most of video, when people are talking, they're facing the camera. So we're used to seeing that, so take advantage of that and it'll be good for your built-in camera. I'd like to actually do a quick demo for you, adding some sound to that Trader Joe's video we made using GarageBand. So let me switch over. Hello, GarageBand. So I have my video right here, ready to go. I've already exported it as a QuickTime movie. I'm going to create a new project, and I want a new movie. So I'm going to just double-click on New Movie. Let's give it a title. I'll just save it on the desktop. We'll call it uh, Trader Dollar. We don't need to worry about anything else down here. Sorry about that bell if you can hear it. I'm going to just keep going. And it's going to bring up a new GarageBand track. I'm going to move it over here. See where it says Drag Movie here? Guess what I'm going to do? You got it. Drag the movie there. <clears throat> Drag the movie there. And it's not working. Maybe I need to change it instead of M4V to MP4. It's going to ask me, yes, MP4. No, why is that not working? There it is. It was being picky. I didn't do anything different that I could tell. Maybe you can rewind it and see it. Um, I think I'm going to actually not even edit that because you might think, wow, Bill really has his act together and does a perfect job all the time. No, sometimes it just works and didn't. If we listen to it by itself, it's going to sound terrible. This is the built-in movie sound. I was not paying attention to it. All right, every cut's incredibly obvious. Let me click on this to pull this out for our preview. When I come back here, it's really obvious when I cut to a different clip. So that's awful. I'm going to actually just delete this, just command delete, gone. What I want to do is come into my loops way down here. And in my loops, I can pick different soundtracks, but actually I want to come to this third little icon here. Technically, it's the podcasting icon, but it gives me all of these sound effects. So I've purchased a couple add-ons through GarageBand. You're not going to have as many, but look at that. I have 2,000 different sound effects. So let's go through. First thing we probably need to hear is either a car driving by or some sort of parking lot. Let's come down to the bottom and type in parking lot and see what we get. Ah, three parking lots. Perfect. That'll be good. Kind of quiet, not too much. I've listened to the grocery store before. You hear lots of clanking, and it's distracting. So I'm not going to do that. And he's outside the whole time. So I'm going to leave it there the whole time. And when he fades out, let me click on this and split that. Command-T for split. And then I can just delete that. I can come over here and fade it out. The great thing about video is I can do this pretty quickly and you can rewind it if you want to see how I faded that out. So let's listen to that audio. Perfect. Maybe I have it fade a little bit slower. Great. 
Let's see, next thing. Oh, that car actually kind of matches. Fantastic. He's going to pick up the wallet. How about if I reach back and I will use my own wallet. I'm going to pick up my wallet. I'm going to angle this microphone down a little bit. When he picks up the microphone, I will pick up the microphone. When he picks up the wallet, I will pick up my wallet. And I actually have a little bit of money. I usually don't. That's fantastic. Uh, let me go to track, new track. Actually, just new basic track will work. It'll be just audio. I'm going to tap, tap the microphone to make sure, good. I'm tapping my built-in microphone to the left of the keyboard. Nothing. Tap the Yeti. Good. I made the mistake once of recording 20 kindergartners, my entire class, maybe 15 feet away from my computer. I was actually using this, the blue eyeball, that has a built-in camera, which is better than the built-in camera you're looking at right now. And the microphone was great. Uh, but I forgot to check and record it with my built-in sound. My computer is 20 feet away. You couldn't hear anything. I had to redo everything. So quick check. Good. It works. Fantastic. So let me hit record. Picks up the wallet, perfect. Get the idea? I can go through, add all sorts of different sounds. Um, that's really the most important one. If I wanted to add a soundtrack, I could come in here to Jingles, and let's go with Jazz. Sort by time, and how long is that, 20 seconds? Let's just find one that's 20 seconds and drag it in. Have a listen. <laughs> That actually kind of worked. I did it a tiny bit early, but it, it works. There's our ending, and then as soon as I'm done, I could just come over to share and export. Done. Upload that to YouTube. Done. Simple enough. I could spend as much time as I want. Um, you're probably not going to do any of that. Just add a soundtrack, and that's okay. So for next week, which is actually now, make sure you've done the student project proposal on um, the main page, just the 514 page. There'll be something there. Make sure to have your storyboards. Just show those to me week seven in real life. For the pod, that's your script. Download that. Um, again, I'll take a look at that next week. And then make sure and upload a rough draft of your video. Upload that to YouTube. If you don't want it to be... Fix my microphone. If you don't want the world to see it, make it unlisted. And then just submit that on the 514 page so that I can see it. Unlisted is you can see it, but only if you have the link. For next week... You're going to just have your final video focus on faster cuts. I'm going to leave some comments for you this week on your video. Add some audio, add some soundtrack. You can do that also on YouTube and make sure it's precisely 29 seconds. YouTube will sometimes add a second, so if it's 30 seconds, that's okay. So that's a lot of what you need to know about audio. There's some other great videos on the week six page. Make sure and listen to those. It extends what I talked about a little bit more. Thanks for listening.